pilots, so, so it was probably one of their personal ones. Um, we get into kind of mundane things. There was, there was an episode where they were in the, uh, in the recreation room and they had, well, you always see the three-dimensional chess set. Uh, uh, they have, there's even a three-dimensional checker set that you see periodically. Um, and a three-dimensional uh, chess checkers and a and a 3D tic-tac-toe set, and those were pretty much used off the shelf. Um, and another silly thing that they used off the shelf, and you see this sitting in one episode, is the the amazing futuristic recreational device uh, sitting on the on the rec table in the rec room uh, in front of uh, Kirk and Spock, and I think Gilman Rand is in the scene. And, and it was made by Milton Bradley uh, in 1955. And there's a, uh, there's a marble inside, and, and there's, there's, a, there's a hole in one side, and there's a hole on the other side. And the idea is you put the marble in and try to let it wend its way all the way through until it comes out the other side. And that constitutes the, uh, the amazing recreational toy of the um, so uh, again, they, uh, they had a monster on board that would that would suck the salt out of you, um, the, the man trap, and and so they they needed a scene where the where the monster kind of the monster can disguise himself as a normal looking person. So, but he kind of gives himself away by by really craving the the salt uh, the salt shakers that he sees on Yeoman Rand's tray. So they had to come up with a salt shaker that, one, looks futuristic as a salt shaker of the 23rd century, uh, but yet, if it looks too bizarre, no one watching the show will recognize it as a salt shaker. So it's, a, it's this funny dichotomy that they face as the futuristic, but has to be recognizable. And this is the, the set that they, that they came up with. And, Kind of an hourglass shape. This is uh, era. You, you, you do all these searches on, on Google and eBay to find these things. Um, so this is a, a set of exciting salt and pepper shakers, and and it's it's it's, uh, it's flavored. You try to do a a, a show that, that has all the wrong mundane stuff in the background. It just doesn't look like Star Trek because you didn't get the details right. Um, how are you coming on that marble? Still working on it? Um, this is a little funny boxy thing that they uh, carried around with them um, in probably about 30 episodes. And they, they are in so many episodes and yet you would you you would never even notice it. It's so nondescript. They usually, you know, carry it around like this onto their arm or something. Uh, you, uh, unless you like pause the, the, the individual frames on the DVD nowadays, you you might think it's a tricord because well, certainly they carry tricords around all the time, black plastic. Um, um, but if you if you freeze frame, you'll see. Wait, 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 wait. There's 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 a, there's a red edge to that thing, and there are a couple episodes where you get a really good view of this boxy thing with the red edge with the yellow buttons and the two dials and the orange thing. And it turned, did you get it? <laughs> did it. Uh, you want to keep working on it? You can put drop it in and try to get it out the other side again. Oh uh, you're gonna be an expert. Um, this particular thing was a a uh, Westinghouse radio that uh, you would, uh, it actually was a ra combined radio with a, uh, a long antenna and at the end of the it, it, telescope, and at the end of the telescope was, was a lamp. So it was kind of a funky design that, that combined both a lamp uh, with, with the antenna. And they, they took off the clunky antenna thing with the lamp on it. They actually used that in a in another episode, which I can tell you about in a minute. Um, and that left this little box, which they, they put red on the side, because it's oh, normally this, this button would uh, turn on and off the light. This, I'm sorry, this button was on and off for the light. This button was on and off for the radio. 
uh, this would be volume for the radio, and this was uh, tuning the tuning the dial. There's a little window over here that you could you were tuning it to, you know, uh, 54 AM, 540 AM, 620. Um, so it's just an AM radio with a lamp. Uh, so if you go on eBay, um, hunt for Westinghouse radio lamp combination and find one of these things, and and it's like priceless because Star Trek fans are. Oh my God! You found one of the original <laughs> Westinghouse radios. Um, but again, point being, mundane, everyday stuff painted up with Starfleet red to make it look uh, futuristic, or what futuristic was supposed to look like in 1966. Uh, yeah, when you the, the, carry it around and and, and they, they don't really say what it is. The one time that it had any kind of description and actually got got used was in. Um, Mudd's women, where uh, Harry Mudd has his three uh, women with him, and he's at a, uh, they convene a little uh, uh, trial thing in the briefing room to decide what, what they're going to do with this guy. Are they going to throw him in the clink? Are they going to take him back to Starfleet? Are they going to let him go? What are they going to do? And as, as they all enter the briefing room, uh, sit down, Mr. Mudd, uh, sit down, uh, pretty Mudd's women, and they all sit down. Uh, and Kirk says something like, you know, let, okay, now we, we will start the, the, the hearing, and this is in front of Sky. And Sky reaches over and presses the button and starts, starts the re recording the, the, whole, the whole procedure. So it's a, if you look in the script for Mud's Women, it says, you know, Scotty activates court recorder device. So this is a court recorder device. At least the first time you saw it. After that, you know, they are carrying it around in sick bay, and McCoy has it down with him on a planet. He's like scanning uh, uh, plants and stuff with, with, his, with, his, with his medical scanner thing. And, and, and he has this with him down on the planet. So he's, he's clearly not a, a court recording device down on the planet with McCoy. So uh, who knows what it actually was. But the first time it was a, it was a court recording device. Um, what else? We uh, talked about how even the, the most mundane things needed to look a little off the beaten track. Um, the playing cards, playing cards of the future, are not rectangular. They are they are round. And this is the this is the same set that again in Mud's Women, in fact, uh, uh, you see Eve, uh, one of the three of Mud's women playing solitaire down on uh, down on the planet, and she has a, a deck of round cards. It actually wasn't solitaire; she was like playing a game called Double Jack. Uh, she corrected somebody who said, "Oh, you're playing solitaire," and she said, "No, I'm playing Double Jack." So this is this is the same the same deck. It's a kind of a, a Chinese-looking Oriental design on the back, and if you freeze frame the the uh, pass those around. Come on. If you freeze frame the episode, you can you can barely make out the pattern. Um, this comes from a uh, they're actually playing cards from Japan. The the Japanese play J Jajako playing cards. Um, I happen to have two two sets. Like I said, so many of my of my props I actually have two sets of in case one gets gets lost or damaged. So are those going around? Yeah. Not much to see. It's round playing cards. <laughs> And then they uh, they first use them in Mud's Women, but then uh, they they reuse them again in the recreation room, just like this uh, goofy, rattly, noisy thing. Uh, you see them playing playing round playing cards, and that's that's the deck you always see. Mm -hmm. Stop first before I get into the stuff they had to custom make. A another off the shelf that they they used at court martial proceedings. And we were talking about it just before we kind of got a, got officially started here. Have, has anybody has have you seen episodes with this with this court martial bell? Yeah, yeah. Any guesses as to how many episodes we saw? Close. You know, calls the court to order, and oh, everybody knows the court martial bell. They used it a thousand times on Star Trek. Well, they used it four times. They used it in. Uh, 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 what was the first one? Kirk's court martial, where he was accused of, of, of killing uh, Benjamin Finney. That's the very first time we saw it. That's when they got the prop, in fact. Um, the script says that uh, the, the, the courtroom uh, has a very naval quality to it, 
including the, uh, the ancient naval uh, ship's bell that Commodore Stone rings to bring the court to order. Well, it didn't turn out to be a, a, an elaborate naval ship's bell. Actually, what this is is a, uh, a bell used by the Rotary Club. Uh, Rotary Clubs, they call their meetings to order. Uh, not just Rotary, but Kiwanis Clubs also, and Optimist Club. They, they all seem to use this standard bell. The advantage is that it's, it's designed to sit on a desktop um, in the courtroom. Uh, a ship's bell would be designed to sit on a tabletop because as ships rock back and forth, they would slide around. So ship's bells are designed to be like mounted to a wall. So they went, oh, well, we thought, yes, I guess we can't really use a ship's bell for our episode because none of them are designed to sit on a tabletop. You don't put things on tabletops much on, on ships. Um, so they came up with this the bell that looks vaguely nautical, I guess, and uh, but it's from the Kiwanis and Rotary Clubs. Um, and it's a, it's a heavy uh, thing. It's made of bronze. It's a, it's a bronze bell. But again, one of those things uh, off the shelf that they uh, uh, that they found and, and used it because it fit the bill. And as we get down to the end of off the shelf or close to the end of off the shelf type things, um, one of the, uh, the common things that they used on Star Trek to look exotic was uh, fancy barware. They, they had exotic looking <coughs> bottles and the Saurian brandy bottle with the kind of crook neck thing is a perfect example, although I didn't bring one with me. Um, this is uh, another example. This is a, a actually a really odd shaped bottle. You, you can't really get anything in this shape anymore. This is a real, real old bottle um, with uh, Scotch whiskey on it. And this is what uh, what Scotty used when he had to uh, he had to drink uh, some other alien guy under the table, the, 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 the Kelvin. So uh, so this is the one. I, I think he had this one uh, hidden under his. Uh, he had a he had a, 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 a suit of armor, and he he lifted up like the, the helmet, and this and this thing was was under the helmet. So uh, uh, a real pricey uh, bottle um, that's really hard to find but it has to be kind of odd shaped because it's supposed to look like the future rather than 1966. Um, so many of my props uh, that I have uh, are actually up at our studio in, uh, in upstate New York. So, so normally I would have a whole lot more to show you, but, uh, uh, but I have left a lot of them up there up in the studio where I couldn't get to them. Um, we see uh, these. Guesses anybody when you see these? Yeah. Star Trek Star Trek fans? Except for people who know already. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, uh, on a handful of occasions, Kirk had to go into his little safe in his cabin next to his kind of next to his bed. Thanks. Good job. You wanna ring it while you're here? Come on, ring it. Come on. Come on. Ring the bell. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Kirk would go into his safe for a number of reasons, and there was a, 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 a just a little envelope thing uh, with with his command patch on it. We saw it three times, looking like this in uh, oh, this side of paradise, and uh, uh, what are little girls made of? One other time that I can't pull off the top of my head. And then the, the last time we saw it in the Tholian web, they had to. God, I sound like such a geek. I sound like, I sound like, I sound like, like, like comic book guy. <laughs> Episode 70, the Tholian web, is where we saw it for this fourth and final time. And, and uh, when we saw it uh, in the Tholian web, it had a. Uh, a little gold label on it now. Um, you actually can't read the labels now. And plugged it in, freeze framed it, and I'm blowing it up on my big, big screen that I have, and my, and you can't, you can't make out what it says. So I'm conjecturing that it says James Tiberius Kirk, USS Enterprise NCC 1701. That's speculation on my part. 
So, so if you ever run into anybody and say, no, I've seen the actual one. You, and no, you haven't seen the actual one. You've seen what Greg thinks it probably looks like. Uh, and, and, and in the case of Napoleon Webb, they had to play back uh, Kirk's final orders, um, you know, to Bones. And, 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 and after, they, after they are done playing the tape, they take it out of a little tape player and Spock opens up the, the envelope and tosses it in and, and, they, and then they put it back in, in the safe. So that's where it, it, it's the thing that holds his final little little tape. Um, the tape is yellow, by the way, if, you're, if you are a geek like I am. So I think that's all the kind of the uh, off-the-shelf type stuff that, that I have. The rest is stuff that they uh, that they had to, had to make from uh, from scratch. Um, a good example is in, actually we'll we'll go in we'll go chronologically. Uh, these are from uh, the cage. <laughs> Smarty pants. <laughs> Ring the bell. Come on, ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cage is correct. Uh, yeah, we saw we saw these uh, a, a <laughs> uh, we saw a early version of the communicator, this clunky clunky thing. Uh, clear. It's uh, diodes and stuff, and I guess. I guess they, they never envisioned in 1964 when the pilot was made that that somebody would invent integrated microcircuit chips. Uh, and so they have these all these resistors. Um, they they had they made a handful of these things for the original pilot, and and later on they even uh, they reused them. It's hard to find any of the of the original communicators because they were repurposed, and by repurposed they took they took the uh, the little antenna things off, um, and added some buttons on the front. They painted it blue. Added some buttons on the front, and and it became the uh, the doohickey that that McCoy used to control uh, the robot Spock when, when his brain was taken was taken out. But if you if you look at the episode, you can see it has the exact same profile. It has the silver button. It has the black buttons on it. Uh, but it has a series of buttons that have been added to it. But it's but it's one of those original cage communicators that was painted over and and uh, and reused for a different purpose. And this is something they they, they made from scratch. They didn't they didn't uh, go and find uh, you know find one of these at, at Woolworths or something and, and, and use it. They had to cast it and and come up with a grid and glue it on. And stuff. So that's the uh, that's the communicator. How did you come by? Was that? Well, oh, that's not what it is. It's somebody, some, some Star Trek it. fan, uh, made an exact copy of it. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Clips on a belt. Clips on a belt. Uh, that's uh, they didn't uh, in the original pilot. They didn't. They didn't have Velcro. Velcro. It, it slipped off. Yeah. One of the uh, original lasers. And accidentally dropped it and scratched and scratched the paint on it, and discovered that um, that the the lasers in the cage, um, if you scratch it below the paint, were clear plastic, just like the communicators were, and they have diodes and all kinds of fancy electrical stuff in the handle and all over, so that so they looked more like. The communicator did. They have all this fancy equipment stuff inside, and somebody, I guess, decided, no, it looks goofy, or it doesn't look good, or you can't see. It. I don't know what. And they went and they, and they painted it black. So, so you'd never know that it's that it's in there. But like I say, this kind of accident. Somebody dropped one of the originals and scratched them in. And I'm like, wait, but oh my God, that's that's clear underneath. Oh, oh holy moly! It's, it has the same kind of electronic stuff that the communicator did, and, and nobody. That was a kind of recent discovery. So here's anyway. Here's the uh, 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 a cage uh, laser. It has a uh, flip up sight. Gene Ronberry wanted a a flip up sight added to the prop. It wasn't there originally, and and uh, and the prop master said, "Here, here, here you go, Gene. What do you think?" He said, "Oh, you need something for aiming." Okay, so they added that on. Um, it has three barrels designed to show some kind of uh, you know. 
you can make it, you know, strong, medium, or, or weak, you know. Uh, the other thing that's not intuitively obvious is that it, uh, um, it goes in and out a little bit at telescopes, um, and you can see that in, in some of the shots. That, that some shots it's, it's, it's kind of long, and other shots it's kind of short. And nobody knew well which one is it. Which was they made different kinds. Well, no, it turns out it turns out it's telescopes because some of this same guy who found one of the originals and dropped it, it's discovered that it had a telescoping pair on. So, uh, and I think they even I think uh, number one Pike's first officer like turns it in order to set the set it on an overload. She does some kind of twisty thing. So you can uh, play well. Uh, one more thing. These uh, wheels on the back are actually. Uh, not present on the cage lasers. Um, it's just plain, plain black. But on the where no man has gone before lasers, because they reused them, they they added these things on. So this is actually not a cage laser because of the little wheel things that makes it a where no man has gone before laser. And these little wheel things are. Uh, funky gear parts from an old Remington typewriter. So if you wanted to make a real good uh, reproduction, you'd have to go and find the proper Remington typewriter with the proper gear things that t -t -t turn as you type and advance the ribbon. Something. Um, cage, cage. We, uh, I'll show you this. Uh, this is a, anybody? Yes? Klingon disruptor? That is a Klingon disruptor crystal, yes. Uh, when it was, uh, this has a, a bit of a history behind it, this prop. It had a, come off? Yes, it actually comes off. Um, the original prop had a different, had a different nose thing on the front. Uh, it had a slightly clunkier uh, red and silver uh, piece on the front. And it was used when uh, Kirk and his gang went down to uh, Imini R7, where they're having the, the computer wars. And Imini R is fighting with Vendikar, and, and, and they, they herd people off into these integrated chambers. And so this is the gun with the funny, funny different front. Uh, that the and without this top of silver thing, by the way, that that was off. But it was it was this with the with the red and silver thing, <coughs> without that that they used on a Mini R7. And then when and, and everybody had them, there were like there were like a dozen. There's a quick re, restrain the Enterprise team and security guards from a Mini R all run in. They all they like twelve guys. How many says? So when they decided, well, we're never going to come back to. A Mini R7 again. We're never going to have another another Mini R7 story. What the heck are we going to do with uh, the red and silver front? And uh, and added this thing and put on this thing and and used them for the first time in when did we first see Klingons? Anybody? Aaron of Mercy. Aaron of Mercy. That's when we first see uh, the Klingon disorders. Um and and the little the little uh, red and silver things we actually see a couple places after they got pulled off we see them as McCoy's some of McCoy's tools um, we but notably uh, we see them on a there's a, a large clunky gray thing with with uh, three points on it um, and that those three points are three of those front red and silver things I didn't bring one of those. Sorry, um, but you can uh, see the Klingon button. There's the, the trigger back here, and that uh, that's designed by Matt Jeffries. And Matt Jeffries designed the Enterprise. Matt Jeffries uh, uh, designed the pistol phasers and the hand phasers. Matt Jeffries was the art designer for Star Trek. 